we've marked up each piece of timber with the face side and face edge. I should remember to mark this one as the bottom. Okay, marked up each piece of timber with the face side and face edge. We know that it's top, middle, bottom, left and right. And we have numbered all of the joint positions bar three and four, which we have not yet measured the position of. So, these, timbers, uh, these pieces of timber are now ready to be marked out for each of the six joints. So, as I said at the beginning, today we're going to focus on the haunched mortise and tenon, which will be joints one and two on the top piece here. Okay. So, to begin with, I'll take my steel rule and my tri-square, and I'm going to mark the length of the tenon. So, as we should always do, we'll check the working drawing for the component that we're going to mark out. So, in this case, we're looking at the drawing for the top rail, which you'll find in the top left-hand corner uh, of the page. And, as we can see here, we've got a dimension of 30 millimetres. So, 30 millimetres is the length of the tenon. From the end of the timber, the shoulder of the tenon is 30 millimetres. And, although it's not given on the left-hand side of the drawing, we know that it will be the same size. So, the tenon is 30 millimetres long. Taking a sharp pencil and a steel rule. Steel rule sitting on the face side, flush with the edge of the timber. I'm going to make a dot close to the edge at 30 millimetres. Like so. I'm going to use the tri-square with the face of the tri-square, this brass face here touching the face edge of the timber. Bring these together nice and tight. We don't want any gap between the tool and the timber. Nice tight fit there will ensure that the line that we scribe is at 90 degrees. So bring that right up to the dot that I've made there at 30 millimetres and scoring that line across once with my sharp pencil. And we can see that there. I want to see this line on all faces of the timber. So I'm going to use my tri-square now against the face side to square this line down onto the opposite edge. The face edge. And then using the face side against the tri-square, I can bring this line around onto the opposite side. So I've measured 30 millimetres and I've looped it all the way around the timber using my tri-square. And I'll repeat that process on the left hand side, sorry, on the right hand side for joint number two. So again, steel rail becomes flush with the edge of the timber. I make my dot at 30 millimetres with my sharp pencil. And using the tri square against the face side or the face edge, I'll square this line around the timber. Remembering to use the face edge when I square the line onto the opposite side. So I've now marked the length of both tenons 30 millimetres in from the end of the timber on the top piece. I now need to mark out the width of the tenon. To do that, I'll be using my mortise gauge. Now we've got two different types of mortise gauge that we might come across. We have the one where we have a thumb screw to adjust the height of the stock and we have one where we'll have to use a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver to adjust the height of the stock. Like so. For the purpose of this video and this demonstration I'm going to use the thumb screw version. So again, we will need to refer to our working drawing to ensure that we get the, the correct dimensions for the width of our tenon. And if we look here at the drawing, we can see in the plan view of the top rail, we have a dimension of eight millimetres. Eight millimetres. So the tenon will be eight millimetres in thickness. We can also see on the right-hand side of the drawing here, we've got a dimension of six so from the edge of the timber to the start of the tenon is six. 
So what that means for us is between the spurs, we will be setting a distance of eight millimeters. And from the bottom spur to the stock, we'll be setting a distance of six millimeters. So we'll begin by adjusting the distance between the spurs and we'll be using the adjusting screw on the bottom of the stem of the mortise gauge to set the distance between the spurs to six millimeters. So I'm going to hold the bottom end of my steel rule against the sharp point of the spur to adjust the distance between them. So what I have here is just higher than six millimeters, just a to touch too wide. I'm going to bring that in using the adjusting screw here until I'm happy that the distance between the spurs is six millimeters. And we want to make sure that we get this as accurate as we can. It can sometimes be tricky to see what you're doing in the light in the room, so just take your time. But I'm happy that the distance I have here between the spurs is six millimeters, which is wrong because this is supposed to be eight millimeters, not six. And just start that again. Now that we've marked out the length of each tenon from the left and the right hand side of the top piece of timber, we're ready to mark the width of the tenon. Okay, so we can use our working drawing to find out what the, the thickness, the width of the tenon is going to be. So we can see here, looking at the the drawn for the top rail, the width of this tenon is eight millimeters. Okay, and we can see on the right hand side that it's six millimeters from the edge. Now, what that means for us, we'll be setting the distance between the two spurs of our mortise gauge to eight millimeters, and the distance from the bottom spur to the stock to six. Now, once this mortise gauge has been set, we want to use it to mark out both the tenon and the mortise, okay? We want to make sure that the, the measurements that we use set on this mortise gauge are exactly the same for the tenon and the mortise. So before I set this and use this to mark out my tenons on the top piece here, what I'm gonna do is take my right and left pieces, and we can see here that we've got joints one and two marked at the top. What I want to do is on the face edge, which I'm going to have as my inside edge, so you can see here left and right, face edge are both facing towards each other, they're going to be the inside of this frame. On the face edge, I want to mark the position of the mortise. Okay, so again, we should refer to our working drawing for this. And we're looking at the bottom right hand side here, where we're looking at the end rails, the left and the right. Turn this drawing around, we can see that the width of our mortise is 25 millimetres and that it's 10 millimetres from the edge of the timber. Okay, so that's what we're going to mark out on both the left and the right pieces. So we'll begin with the right, I'm going to take my steel rule. And perhaps an easiest way to do this is to secure the timber in the vise. Okay, so I've got the timber in the vise. I'm taking my steel rule. I'm going to make two dots on the timber. So the flat edge of the steel rule is going to go right against the edge here. I'm working on the face edge. I'll make my first dot at 10 millimetres because I know the mortise is 10 millimetres from the edge. Keeping the steel rule in place, I know that my second line is 25 millimetres away from the first. So if I add 25 to 10, I know that I need to make my second dot at 35 millimetres. So the distance between these two dots is 25. I'm going to move that from the bench face now and take my tri square against the face edge to square two lines on the face side that are 25 millimetres apart. And this line here is 10 millimetres from the edge. So I'll now repeat that process on the left piece. So again, face edge facing me, secure the timber in the vise, working on joint position number one. 
same process. Steel rail flat and flush against the edge of the timber. Sharp pencil to make a dot at 10 and 35 millimeters from the edge. Try to square against the face side. Square two lines across my face edge. Like so. So I have the left and the right joints number one and number two. And I've marked out the positions for the mortise. So I can put these to one side for just now whilst I set the mortise gauge. So, as I said, the distance between the two spurs is 8 millimetres. For the purposes of this video, I have already set that. So I'm going to hold my steel rule on the bottom spur. And I would use the adjusting screw at the bottom of the stem here to adjust the distance between the spurs. As I said, I've already done so. The distance between these two spurs is 8. All that remains to do is to set the distance from the stock to the spur. To six millimeters now with this particular mortise gauge i can tighten the thumb screw to hold the stock in place you may also end up using a mortise gauge where a screwdriver is required to adjust the the stock okay but the for, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration i'll be using the thumb screw version so i'll loosen off the stock i'll take my steel rule and I will set the distance between the stock and the bottom spur to 6 millimetres. And I'll tighten this up. Always double check your measurements before you mark them out to make sure that you are happy with them. So I'm happy that I've set a distance of 8 millimetres between the spurs and a distance of 6 millimetres from the spur to the stock. I have my top piece of timber marked out with 1 and 2. Before I mark out the tenons, I'll do what I like to call my two dot test. When I take the mortise gauge, I hold it against the face side and press two dots into the timber. For the purpose of the video, just to make it clear, I will pencil these in. However, I wouldn't normally pencil these dots, but it's just to make it clear for you in the video. So that was from the face side. I'll now mark a similar two dots, close to the original two, from the opposite side. Okay, not the face side. Press these in, and again, for the purpose of the video, I'll pencil them in, but I wouldn't normally do that. And we can see that they are on the same level. Okay, there's no rise or fall between them, which tells me that I've set my mortise gauge properly and that it's centered on the timber. Okay, if there was any variation between these two sets of dots, I would need to adjust the mortise gauge until they existed like this on the same level. But I'm happy that I've set that properly. So to mark out the tenons, I'll be securing the piece of timber and the vise. I know that the face side is this side of my timber, so therefore the face of the stock on the mortise gauge will be touching that side of the timber. I'm going to use my thumb on my spare hand to apply pressure to the spurs to score the line from the edge to my pencil line at 30 millimetres. I don't want to put too much pressure on the stock in case I adjust it and move it out uh, of the measurement that I set. So hold the stock firmly, pressure on the spurs, to score two lines onto the timber. Okay, you may have to do this a few times depending on how much pressure you apply to the spurs. I can then use my pencil to pencil those lines in. I'll turn the timber now. Face side hasn't moved, it's still on this side of the timber, so therefore the stock and the face of the mortise gauge stays on that side. And I'll use the same process to mark the two lines on this end. Again, the face side hasn't moved, the face side is still here, 
I'll use the same process to mark my lines on this edge. What I can now do is mark out my waist areas. So everything above the line on the edge is waist and everything below this line is waist. Same on the end grain. Same on this edge. And score out all of this on the opposite side and on the face side. I might end up scoring through my number one, that's okay. So now I need to repeat this process on this end to mark out joint number two. So my final task here is to score the lines that I marked with my tri-square right at the beginning with a marking knife so that it's easier for me to saw these later on when I come to cut the joints. So the two lines on my face side and the two lines on the opposite side I will score with a marking knife. So to do that, I'll take my marking knife and my tri-square. Try square against the face edge. Easiest and safest to do this flat on the bench. Okay, so I'm putting the timber flat on the bench, holding the try square nice and tight, uh, nice and tight against the timber. My fingers are nowhere near where I would be using the marking knife. Okay, so I've got not get anything behind here. Holding it nice and tight on the line and scoring that line with my marking knife. Okay. I guess to make a small groove here, right in the line, to locate my saw much more easily. Do the same on the opposite side. Bring it right up to the line and score it on. I'll do the same on the opposite side, like so. This top mark, this top part, is now completely marked out. I've marked out the the tenon on both ends. I've marked out my waist areas, and I've scored lines with my marking knife to help prepare me to cut this particular part. But as I said previously, what we need to do, whilst we have set the mortise gauge, is use the mortise gauge to mark out the mortises on the left and right pieces. Okay, for joints one and two. Okay, because we've set this, we want to make sure that we use the exact same measurements for both parts of the joint, both the tenon, which we've just marked out, and the mortise. Okay, so when marking out the, the mortises, the timber's going to go in the vise again. I'll be scoring my line uh, with a mortise gauge between the two lines I have here, and again, holding the mortise gauge against the face side of the timber, which for me, again, is this side. Very easily and carefully, score those two lines down, pencil them in, and then the middle area is waste, like so. I'll do the same here on the right piece, into the vise, face side is this side of the timber, that's where the tool goes, and I will score my lines in the same fashion. Waste marked out. Now, as this is a haunched mortise and tenon, we'll need to mark the haunch on the left and the right pieces incorporate the hodge into the end of the mortise here. So to do that we'll need our 
marking gauge and steel rule. If we check the working drawing here, we can see that we have got a 10 millimeter haunch on the tenon. And that corresponds to this 10 millimeter distance here on the mortise. So what we need to do is set our marking gauge to 10 millimeters. So I'll loosen off the thumb screw, thumb under the stock, and I'll slide the stock up until the spur sits on 10 millimeters. I'll tighten the thumb screw, double check to make sure it hasn't shifted, but I'm happy that's still on 10. So I'm going to be scoring a line 10 millimetres down on the end grain here with the stock touching the same face, the same edge as the mortise that I've already marked out. Now it's probably going to be easiest for me to do this with a timber securing device. So my mortise is already marked on this edge here. All I need to do is score my line across the end grain. I can see that there, I won't pencil it in just yet. I'm going to do the same on the second piece, on the right piece of timber here. So, goes into the vise, the mortise is on this edge of the timber, and we'll do the same thing. I'll score that line 10 millimetres across the, the end grain there. I can now take my mortise gauge, which remains set at the dimensions we already had it set to, so 8 millimetres between the spurs, and 6 millimetres from the bottom spur to the stock. I'm going to use this mortise gauge against the face side, as I have done already. Score the two lines from the end of the mortise to the end of the timber, and then down on the end grain to the line that I've scored here at 10 millimetres. And again, it's going to be easier for me to do this with the timber in the vise. So I can score my two lines on the timber here. And I can score them on the end grain as well. Put that to one side and I'll repeat that process on the other piece of timber. Like so. And like so. So I can take my sharp pencil. I can pencil these lines in now. And this small section that I've just marked out is the hodge, so I can mark that out as waste. This will be cut separately to the main mortise. But it's important to mark it out at the same time. Just mark that waste. So we've now fully marked out the hodged mortise on the left and right pieces of timber for joints one and two. So what we now have are the five components marked out. So we have the left, we have numbered joints one at the top and number five at the bottom. And in the top corner here for joint number one, we've fully marked out the mortise, including the hodge. For the top piece, we've marked out joints one and two on the left and the right, where we have the full tenon marked out on both sides. For the middle piece, all we've done is mark the face side and edge and joints three and four on the left and the right. For the bottom piece, face side and edge, joints five and six on the left and the right. So three and four, we still have to mark the joints out for. And finally, on our right piece here for joint number two in the top corner, we have the fully marked out uh, mortise, including the haunch. And then we've got joint number six labeled at the bottom, ready to be marked out. So we've completely marked out the mortise and tenon. On the mortise, we've included the haunch. We'll cut the haunch into the tenon uh, later on. Uh, so for our next stage, uh, we'll begin to look at the bridle joint. So that would be joints five and six on the bottom piece and five and six on the left and the right.